thing we're doing together. Okay. Hey, we got four more questions. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Jesus baptism, religion, relationship, angels, or historical criticism? Angels. Mm-hmm. All right. I got it right here. It says, this question is from Emma, who writes, what do Lutherans believe about angels? Rankings, names, if we have our guardian angels, etc.? I just became Catholic after considering the Missouri Synod for quite a while. I'm still interested in learning. Thanks. First things first, Emma. Let's let's work on this Catholic business here. Now, there's not going to be much difference between the Lutherans and the Catholics on the doctrine of angels. The, but probably the one difference would be that the Catholics have the Apocrypha, the the kind of non-prophetic Old Testament, the sections between Malachi and uh, and the preaching of John the Baptist in the New Testament, and in there you get one other angel name, Raphael, I think, comes in there, because we only have other, otherwise we only have two angel names, Gabriel and Michael, given to us in the uh, prophetic and apostolic scriptures. But the basic idea is going to be the same. So here's some few things on the angels. Number one, God made the angels. They, do, they are not eternal. They were creations from God. They were made during the original sec- hexagameron, the f- original six days of creation, sometime in there. Now, the, the Moses in Genesis 1 and 2 is dealing with the creation of things that we see, so the angels aren't listed in there, but it must have been very, very early because the angels, according to Job, were singing together as God was crafting the earth. So right at the beginning, God creates these angels who are rejoicing in all of his works as they watch them unfold. The second point is that we can use two we use two chief words to describe the angels. One is spirit and the other is angel, and the idea of the spirit refers to the essence of the angels, the idea of angel refers to the work of the angel. So th- the word angelos, or uh, let's see, it's in Hebrew, it's malach, is, it, it means messenger. And it can refer to a spiritual messenger, like the angels, what we're normally talking about, or even a, a human messenger. Like if a guy's running to give a message, he would be a malach or an angelos. The, the gospel in, in Greek is the oiangelion. You hear the word angel in there, on angelion. That's the good message. So, so they are spirits uh, who are given the task of delivering God's work and God's word. Here's the definition of the nature of angels, and this is, I'm pulling from this little Bible study that we put together on angels and demons. You can find that at wolfmuller.co. Um, you know, the good place to look is this little book, Outlines of Doctrinal Theology. If you go to, again, if you go to wolfmuller.co and click on the books button, you can find this little Angels and Demons anthology or this book, Outlines of Doctrinal Theology. And you could buy them, but you can download them for free. And there's these old Orthodox stuff. But here's the definition of angels there Angels are finite spirits without bodies and complete in their spiritual nature. They are personal, rational, and moral beings of great but limited wisdom and power and of various ranks and orders. It's especially interesting to me. Oh, so, okay, so let me get there because ranks and orders are part of the question. But the, so the angels are created by God. They are spiritual, being complete in themselves. So they never were intended to have a body. They're great in strength, great in number. There's lots of them. And there's good and there's evil angels. Now, all the angels were originally created good. But at some point, led by the devil, the Satan, the chief archangel, uh, Lucifer, the, the, there was a rebellion that happened in heaven. And we think from Revelation 12, a third of the angels fell with the devil, and these angels became what we now refer to as the demons, principalities, powers in the air, and so forth, as Paul will list them. And they're in this eternal battle over the kingdom of God, over you and me, and so forth and so on. Now, it's interesting that Paul will talk about the evil angels. When he talks about them, he'll use the military language of ranks and, and this sort of thing. So we see that this, the angels themselves are kind of drawn up in ranks like an army, and that's what the, the chief word that the Old Testament will use to describe the Lord's relationship to the angel. He is Lord of Sabaoth. That word Sabaoth means hosts. I used to think it meant Sabbath because it sounds like Sabbath, but Sabaoth is different than Sabbath. Sabbath means rest. Sabaoth means hosts. And it's Lord God of Sabaoth, the Lord God of hosts, that there's ranks, thousands and thousands of angels uh, that are there. 
What else do we want to say about them? The third, they fall. Oh, yes, the angels also have, they are confirmed. This is interesting. It seems like the Lord arranged for the angels a, a single test, and after that test, they passed or they failed, and they are now confirmed. The good angels are confirmed in their state of bliss. The evil angels are confirmed in their state of perdition. So there is no salvation for the devil and the evil angels. That's what that's what Hebrews teaches us, that Jesus did not become an angel to save the angels, but a man to save us. The work of the good angels is to worship God and to serve his church. The worship of the evil angels is to despise God and fight against his church. Um so we have that as well. Let's see, names. Oh, yeah, and do we all have our own guardian angels? That's a good question. The closest we can get on that is, is Matthew chapter 18, where Jesus warns against causing one of the little ones to stumble. And if we cause one of the little ones to stumble, he talks about how they, their angels behold the face of the Father in heaven so that we know that there's an angel appointed to the children. Now, do those angels stumble? Stick w- with us throughout our life. We don't have, we don't have a scripture that can confirm that. I suppose in some ways, uh, we can only hope. But we know that the angels are busy protecting and serving the people of God, and that includes uh, you and me. So great. Que- who is that? Qu- that question was from Emma. That's a great question, Emma. See how good the Lutherans answer the questions. I think that's something to consider there, Emma, something to consider. 